Hi, everyone. Um, today I'm with Jason, Jason McCarthy, who is the uh, vice captain of Wickham Wanderers, who currently play uh, League One, seventh in the league. Um, welcome, Jason. Good to see you. Yeah, thanks, Tim. Thank you for having me. That's all right. Now, now you've got a fascinating story. I mean, I've already heard your story from other people before, and uh, I wanted you to share with us um, a little bit about your life um, and obviously how you became a Christian. But could you start first by just detailing us with the well about your career, really? Yeah, sure. So my career started at Southampton. Um, I was born and raised in Southampton. I got picked up for the academy really early. I went into the um, under nines. And then I went right through the um, age groups and then made my ended up making my debut for the club at 19 as well on Boxing Day. Um, funny enough, no, we're in the festive season. So <laughs> it was Boxing Day when I just turned 19 in the Premier League at Crystal Palace, which was um, a special moment for me. And then next season after that, I went on um, multiple loans really from then on. So I went on uh loan to Wickham Wanderers funnily enough the club I'm at now they were at a very different stage then they were in league two um and then I went to Walsall the following year um I had two really good seasons at Wickham and Walsall um I picked up player of the season both seasons so that was great and then I ended up signing for Barnsley um on a permanent basis um and then I signed back for Wickham and I went to Millwall for a year then I've been at Wickham for the last three years. So, um, yeah, I've done quite a lot of moves, but um, Wickham's definitely sort of been the club that I've always mm. seemed to sort of go back to. Mm. Yeah, great. And obviously the reason I've asked you today is because you're a Christian and can you, you've got a fascinating story. Can you tell us how you became a Christian? Yeah, sure. So um, I didn't grow up in a Christian home. Um, I actually didn't really see the need for God um, in my life at all. I had a really good upbringing. Um, my dad had a great job. Um, my mum didn't have to work. I came from um, just a really sort of wealthy background. Um, and I had life good. Like I was in the academy at Southampton. Um, and I never really really sort of see, saw the need for God. Um, my parents are brilliant. Um, with me I couldn't fault how they raised me um, I really appreciate everything they, they've done for me and I'm still really close with my parents now um, mm -hmm. but like I said I never really felt the need for for God or to know God um, and then the season I was at Barnsley obviously I mentioned I went to Barnsley um, when I was 21 um, was the year that I kind of moved away from home and the year the toughest year of my life um, for, to that point I never had to deal with any real sort of um, difficulty. And then that year, they were just numerous. Um, they kept coming. I um, I had to deal with grieving for the first time in my life. Um, so I lost my granddad, I lost my, my uncle. And then I sort of saw from that, my dad sort of go through depression, which was really hard, obviously losing his dad and his brother. Um, and then I, if I'm looking back now, I would probably say I was dealing with probably definitely symptoms of depression but bottling it up and mm. not having to deal with it um or put try and put on a brave face mm. you know through my grieving and then I got sold in a nightclub um I got um burgled um loads of different things happened this season um oh my friend that's it as well me and my friend got held at knife point it was oh. crazy endless um all within the space of a year um mm. And this was when I really kind of noticed that my happiness and my identity was based in me playing on a Saturday, a game of football. Football was my God. Football was everything that I placed my happiness on. And I really realised that because now for the first time, things off the pitch weren't going very well. So football became an escape for me more than my enjoyment or passion yeah. became my escape. And the inevitable happened really, um, which I hadn't had to deal with in my career before is that I lost form and I came out of the team. Um, and then really the question was, who are you? You know, and 
I didn't know who I was. I didn't know what my purpose or identity was at after, at that point. Mm. Um, and I remember there was a teammate with me at Barnsley called George Monker. And he used to always share with me um, that he was praying for me and that God had a plan for me. And I really envied his peace. I always say to people that he was annoyingly happy. Um, <laughs> is how I described him. Like he was annoyingly yeah. happy. But I liked being around him nevertheless. Mm. And um, anyway, because of the tough year, I went back to Wickham and uh, I wanted to enjoy my football again in a comfortable environment, which I knew well, and be closer to my family. And uh, I gained my love back for football. Things were going great on the pitch, but I still had that lingering fear in the back of my head. Like, what if I come out of the team again or what if bad things happen again? So that anxiety was still there. Um, I was having lunch one day in the canteen and two of my teammates, a guy called Alex Samuel, who um, is probably my best friend now, and a guy called Ben Fremper, who I'm really, really close with as well, um, was having uh, lunch again um, across from me and they were talking about Christ. They were talking about Jesus. And I never heard anyone talk about Jesus, how they were talking about him, except yeah. George Moncur at my old club and I thought okay it seems to be a bit of a pattern here and mm. I definitely noticed the same joy in George in these two mm. and I was like right okay um I was sort of listening to a conversation over there trying to pretend I'm not listening to these two but I was I, I was listening yeah. and um anyway the next day I asked them both you know if they'd like to go for a coffee and I remember we went for a coffee and I um they both sort of shared with me their stories as I'm sharing them now with you. And it became really real to me, you know, that actually Jesus had completely changed their lives. And, okay. you know, he was still still talking to them, still moving in their lives. And I thought, wow, this is an incredible life-changing thing. and something that actually is to be taken very seriously. Mm. And I remember when they shared with me the gospel, the good news of Jesus, and I thought, I just remember I kept, I kept thinking, well, what's the catch? What's, what's my end of the bargain here? What have I got to do? And, you know, really, is it just the belief? Like, wow, like, then he will come and change everything else that needs to be changed. And I thought, wow, that's incredible. Um, I thought, I've really started to open my mind up to it. So I started to pray. I asked God to reveal himself to me, to show show me that he's real and, you know, to speak to me really in a way in which I would understand, and, mm. you know, and um, I started really feeling peaceful and I started to really feel comfort in prayer to, to God. And I really felt like he could hear me and he was listening. So that sort of started to open my mind up, but I, it, it wasn't enough to like really commit, I would say. And then I had an, an encounter with God, which was life changing. And I was driving in my car one day and I was listening to some, some music that one of them guys, Ben had sent me. And um, I heard the voice of God very audibly. And it just said, Jason, my son, I'm proud of you. And I love you. And I, I just said a really simple prayer after that. I knew that I'd encountered God and I, and I knew that, what I'd encountered was sort of up to that point that everything was leading to that point right there um, with God in that moment. And that what I just encountered was something much bigger than football mm. and much bigger than anything else in my life. Yeah. And that really, that I've really felt in that moment that God sees me and um, he, he loves me. And um I said a simple prayer. My prayer was like, God, I believe that you sent your son and you died for me, mm. Jesus. And then you know, I now want to live for you. You know, you died for me. I now want to live for you. And um, I'm much, very much all or nothing character anyway. As I'm not sure we'll discuss life before football. I'm all or nothing. So from that point, really, I was all in for Jesus. And I am. And um, he's changed everything for me. And, I can honestly say that um, God is real and that um, God loves me and he's, he's completely flipped life on its head for me. Mm. 
so how is your life you mentioned that a second ago how is your life different now before you became a christian before you believed in jesus to as it is now what what's the difference in your life there's there's many different differences um in my life now um i would say you know one of the biggest thing big things is my purpose you know i i used to play football for me i used to play football um for to get good contracts so for money um or you know for self promotion mm. selfish ambition you know and there's nothing wrong with you know good ambition or godly ambition yeah. but you know i wanted to get to the highest level to mm. get the best things or to make it look to everyone else that i was doing well mm. whereas now um i play football with a real freedom so mm. there's so much liberty in playing football for god that actually it takes the weight off you know it takes the pressure off of what others think and really i know that whatever the outcome that god is is proud of me and um and he loves me and i want to i want his name to be glorified so you know i'm now no longer doing it for my own selfish ambitions you know the perspective's completely changed and there's so much freedom in that um and you know how I live my life off the pitch is completely different as well. Like yeah. I used to, you know, I don't drink anymore. I used to, you know, and there's a drinking culture in football. You know, it's definitely not as bad as it used to be, but it's still there. Mm. You know, and I wouldn't say I like going to nightclubs and things like that, whereas I used to. Mm. Whereas I don't do, I don't live that life anymore. Yeah. Um, you know, and I have now an amazing marriage. Um, as a result of those things and two beautiful children so I have a real amazing family home life which mm. is which is so important and um is played a massive part in my my um happiness and um I can only put that down to God I can only put that down to what God has done in me and in mm. my family um so life life off the pitch now is a lot different um my sundays are obviously very different now i go to church and um which i love i love being part of um my community and my church and that's had such an impact in my life as well so uh many different things but if i had to name a few that there'd, there'd be there'd be some mm. and what about actually on it within your workplace being a christian now obviously the guys know you're a christian how 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 do they react to that and what's it like being a christian within the club yeah so there's definitely been um a change obviously there's players who um it's been amazing really there's players who come to the club who will say to me oh i've heard um about you um okay. and because of your faith and stuff like that and oh. it's funny because i remember being the non-christian and people would talk about a player who was a Christian. I'd say, oh, he's he's one of them big Christians. Like, you <laughs> know, it's really funny and <laughs> ironic, really, now that people were saying yeah. it about me. Mm. Um, <laughs> I, remember, I remember being that person who was saying yeah. it about the other guy. So mm. um, you have that, I think. And there's a responsibility that comes with being a Christian. You know, I really believe that. And when you, when you start saying that you're a follower of Christ, you know, I really think, ah, oh, our, our walk has to match our talk and um of course there's grace in that 100 mm. percent. and none of us are perfect mm. um but you know there's there's definitely a responsibility there with that and a good one you know yeah it's an opportunity for us so um but no definitely i players also have seen the transition in me so players i've played okay. who have played with throughout the process have seen yeah. the transition and change yeah um so that's definitely been a process and i'll be honest there's relationships from when i was maybe really close with certain people who maybe i'm not as close with i yeah. still would say we're friends but yeah. we just maybe don't have the same motives now yeah. stuff like that but that's a good thing and that's yeah. something that um god's um definitely put in me and i believe that i believe that those same people will see and i pray that they'll see the light in um that that life led differently so um but yeah it's definitely it's not always easy in a football environment and in a changing room yeah. being a christian and being a witness for jesus but um 
I just see it as an opportunity and really I've found the most impactful conversations and God moving the most in one-to-one -one scenarios. Yeah. Okay. And um, really, uh, I think, you know, when we're alone and when we're with our own thoughts mm. um, is, you know, then all them things will come to light. Mm. So, and I'm, I'm hoping that in them moments, the players will think of me and maybe yeah. what, we've we spoke about on a personal mm. level or things like that you know the real impactful stuff so yeah yeah can i just ask one bit just last one last question for anyone who's maybe listening to this and is maybe have thoughts about god or is unsure about god could you give a bit of advice to them yeah sure so um i always sort of whenever i get asked this um I always suggest the Alpha course. I know we hadn't spoken about it, but the Alpha course is brilliant. The Alpha course is great for people who are um, on, you know, on the edge or not sure or have questions. And we run the them Alpha at our course. church, by the way. If anyone is interested in what Jason's saying, we run them at our, run them at our church. So just speak to me. Sorry, carry on. Oh, yeah, no, brilliant. That's so good. Didn't even know that. Um, <laughs> but the Alpha, the Alpha course is great for people who are sort of, on the fence and have questions to ask um so i would suggest that um but also i would say there's nothing wrong with praying to god and asking god to reveal himself mm. to you um and i would also say at that moment to then look out and to be have your eyes open because a lot of people i've met have say that and they say oh, i'm just waiting for that moment but actually this happened today that could just be a coincidence or something like that like god doesn't work in coincidences like god is um a coincidence is god speaking and god yeah. moving and yeah. um you know if we're if we're open and we have our hearts open to god we will see him you know the bible says seek and you'll find you know and um knock and the door will be open to you so god is at the door um he's just waiting um he's waiting for you to knock and he'll open it so yeah Wonderful. Well, thank you so much for taking your time to share your story with us. And uh, I look forward to, or we look forward to following your career as well. And hopefully we can get promoted as well. But I think the most important thing is that people find Jesus and uh, seek Jesus and invite him into their hearts and, and then experience what we all do as Christians, that, that peace and assurance that God gives. So thank you, Jason. And I wish you all the best. Thanks for spending the time with us today. Brilliant. Thank you, Tim. Take care. See ya.